Twitch and people from Knoxville and anybody who happens to watch this whatsoever. I am Greeby, Ryan Greeby, and uh, my in-game name is Obsolete Zio. I am bringing you a Rivals of Ixalan set review. Um, interested in doing this? I'm excited. A couple things to note. I pre-recorded some other stuff earlier that I think ended up being too lengthy. I went into too much detail, maybe. And I'm going to redo this with more concise thoughts, hopefully. Uh, I do want to give an overall view as well at the end, uh, where I just break down the overall set and how I think about it and how uh, good of a job Wizards did. I have some back no background noise, maybe. Uh, my mic, I think, is really good. It's newer, and I'm happy that I have it, but you might hear some background sound from either my apartment or air conditioner, computer, and my computer is very bad, and unfortunately, it's very loud. And that's just kind of unfortunate. Also, hopefully, I can control my breathing a little bit better, or it doesn't come off uh, horribly. Uh, this mic quality is so, so good, and I also don't want to put music on the background because I don't want the VOD to get muted, so I don't have any background noise other than myself. So, um, yeah, if that ever is a negative, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but I'll try and be concise and make this good, do my best of a job. Uh, I found that talking ad nauseum and without stopping to breathe is <laughs> very difficult. And I also have, pardon me, some water. So, uh, yeah, that's that. And we're going to go into the set review. So here we go with white. Um, we have Baffling End, which is a callback to Silk Wrap, and a lot worse than Silk Wrap. Um, Baffling End, I think, is... A pretty significant drawback if it does leave the battlefield. It's obviously pretty efficient for what it does and could see some play. Uh, it's be curious, let's talk a little bit just briefly about some potential ban and restricted announcement bans to Teamer Energy. Uh, there's been some talk of that, and if that happens to maybe some cards like Tune with Aether or Aether Hub, or even Werther Virtuoso or Rogue Refiner, then I don't quite know where the format's going to go. I have an idea of where the format could go. I think that um, it's possible black-green based decks get better. And I think it's possible that tribe-based decks could get really good. And I'd like to see that. I think, you know, when you have a tribe-based deck, you want to reward people for exploring those options. And you want to hopefully give some good options too, which I don't think they did a good enough job in, in Ixalan. Anyway, to make this succinct for this card... It's efficient. The drawback is real, though. Um, it's also possible that getting the 3-3 green dude, uh, they get an upgrade to the card that you exile. But I think generally speaking, <coughs> excuse me, you're targeting a pretty good creature that is pesky and you want off the battlefield. If energy is still in the format, then it's also a good catch-all to, to Whirler Virtuoso predominantly. Um, Long Tusk Cup I don't think is going to be as much of a problem this time around, although it's still going to be very good. And, yeah, I like this card. It's fine. Nothing special. We have Bishop of Binding, which is a callback to cards like Fiend Hunter and whatnot, and I don't think it's very good. It is 4 mana and is only a 1-1, so its stats are a pretty big um, hamper to this card being effective. It's a vampire, which is nice, and it has an interesting ability, but the problem is its stats are so bad that, you know, even if you target itself, you're really not doing much here. And it's overcosted for similar effects. You have Fairgrounds Warden. You have other cards in general that I think are more efficient. So I don't like this card very much. Blazing Hope is super intriguing. It's one mana and a uni unique effect, uh, which has never been printed before. And I think, in general, is maybe going to see play in Grixis kind of esh uh, Death Shadow decks, but I don't expect that. I, I feel like this card is super niche. Unless some core mechanics of the game change years down the line, it's going to be rare for this card to see play because I think 
it's very difficult to even get the card to be you usable like you have to have your life total at such a low level um that and yet and your opponent has to have also on the other end your opponent has to have a, a creature with high enough power that this, these match up and that you can um, be very efficient obviously it is efficient if it works but i think that's a very difficult um ask so i think this is not very good although it's cool and i like that they um designed this card we have cleansing right uh, when i d did this previously i went pretty in depth on popper and then i also went pretty in depth on limited design and limited design i think is a problem i'll touch on this briefly um, but i think i'm going to more shoot this towards the end of my overall review so i'm actually not going to discuss this much right now if you're interested in my thoughts on the set as a whole and uh, limited design standard design constructed design i'm going to hint at that at certain cards but i'm not going to talk about it too much here in general cleansing ray is pretty bad divine verdict pretty bad everdon champion three mana two two this is a uh pretty cool effect here i like that this is a thing and i wish that this said vampire um but not only is this is fine for limited i like the design options here and it would be cool to see this effect on a higher statted dude um cool different i uh, want more of things like this exultant sky marcher now this is something this is a three minute two three flyer and might be a candidate for some popper interaction some popper goodness uh, it's got good stats, very good and limited. It's also a vampire. I don't know about constructed playability. It's double white, uh, and in a, a two-color deck that requires good amounts of white and black. Sometimes this is actually difficult. Um, I think this is underrated how difficult like a three-drop with double cost is sometimes on mana. Still very much doable, obviously, but um, something to think about. And I think this card is very good and limited. Uh, not so much maybe in standard. I'm not quite sure. I don't think it's I don't, I don't think it makes the cut at all So that's my thoughts on that famished palette. Oh, and in popper. I think it could be pretty sweet Because <clears throat> it had the uh, evasion is really nice and if you compare it to other colors of similar kind of stats and mana costs I think it's it lines up pretty pretty fine obviously not Delver, but famished paladin uh the first time around I read cards, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys just do the reading. Uh, this is similar to Nettle Sentinel, and it is cool. Not at all close to being as good as Nettle Sentinel was, and very difficult to get the trigger to work. I like the fact that you have to work for it. I like the fact that they are trying to push out a 2-mana 3-3, three, three, and I think we need more of that, but I think the drawback is pretty significant, and I think it's a problem that... It seems like a lot of the cards in Vampires are encouraging you to have gain life effects, but it seems like the gain life effects aren't good enough to justify playing. And if I thought about this more, uh, I could spend more time talking about this. I haven't put together all the cards with Gather or something to see what an actual deck using this kind of card would look like. I, I don't know if there's enough just a coincidental kind of effects where you can get that. Obviously, there's a lot of 1-1 one, one vampire token kind of cards, which is good, which helps. Um, and you'd obviously have to pair cards from original Ixalan, and I think it's good. Uh, like Legion's Landing is obviously a card that you want to be playing, and I think this card is fine. Hopefully, we'll see a good amount of play in Standard. I'd like to see that happen. Because I think this card is unique and it's good to have something like this being created. So, good job, Wizards, on uh, making this dude. Sorry that you're starving, though, bud. You need some, needs to get some more blood. Uh, Forerunner of the Legion. I'll let you guys read this, and I'm just going to say that this is part of a cycle of uh, colors of dudes that put things on top. <clears throat> Not really card advantage. Uh, really good effect for a limited, I think. Excuse me, really good for late game and um, provides good stat options and relevant uh, text for limited. Uh, a little bit over costed for standard. That's my thoughts on Forerunner. Imperial Ceratops. 
Um, yeah. Could see some French play, maybe. This should have been common, in my opinion. I don't think this card's very good. And Legion Conquistador. Here we have a problem where... Type this card in right now. If I can do an actual good job. Ixalan. Well, that's not Rivals of Ixalan. That's just Ixalan. Same art. Same card. Here we have Rivals of Ixalan. I don't know how I feel about this. So this is kind of going to be a quick tangent, hopefully, but uh, we have reprints all the time in sets. Um, later on, you'll see Negate. And, uh, but it's strange that some cards get reprinted and others don't and, uh, as a general design kind of thing. It's like I feel like if they have core cards that they reprint on a consistent basis for draft or for standard in general, I think that's fine. And... It's good to see those cards appear. If we have a community have agreed that those are serviceable cards for what they do, because then they make designing sets, I think, uh, they're like the glue, I think, sometimes of just the core of magic. Of This is a standard good, not, uh, not standard the format, but this is a standardly good card uh, in general, and we're going to reprint this multiple times uh, repeatedly. So... We've seen this lately with Negate and Dispel to an extent and Evolving Wilds for sure. Um, these are unique effects that Wizards has deemed that are safe, quote unquote, safe space for standard and are good reprints to have in every set and nobody seems to be complaining about. And it's also interesting that they keep pushing with new art. This, Legion Conquistador, is a unique thing that is not, to my knowledge, happened where they've had a set and then immediately after the set after from the same block reprints the same card. This bothers me a little bit. Um, I could go super in depth on this, but it's frustrating and I have a problem with it. And I don't know. It, Wizards is not being creative while doing this. They are making their lives easier. They are. It makes me feel like they're running out of ideas. It makes me feel like they're being lazy. Uh, it doesn't really serve a unique kind of effect for a limited, maybe? I don't know. Like, it's like, why would you need this card if you're just going to randomly draft or something? It's, it's not like a reprint, like, evergreen effect, like Negate or Evolving Wilds, which are just classically reasonable and good. Um... Deep breaths, boys. Deep breaths. I don't know how I feel. I don't like it. I don't like it, Wizards. Uh, I could talk more, but we'll keep it brief. Same kind of vein. Why do you not just print pacifism? Real quick. God damn it. <laughs> Look at this card. And look at this card. Oh, whoa, that's a little bit more expensive. So why? I don't know. You reprint some cards, you don't reprint other cards. It's just strange to me, and yeah, I don't know. I don't like it either. Could be more of a Debbie Downer here, but I'm not going to be. Okay, Majestic Helioptorus. Uh, like I said before, we'll keep this one brief. Uh, very good for limited. Really cool limited card. I love this art. I might be a candidate for one of my favorite arts in the set. We'll talk about a, one that's better later. Um, really good foreshadowing perspective, depth, and just sick colors. And I love this. Whoever, Philip, mm, mm, where's your resolution, Wizards? Brave, Brave I don't. I haven't heard of this artist before. But if this is like one of his first outings and he's done a good job, I could Google him later. But not part of their set review. But anyway, um, great art. Cool limited card. Uh, four minute two two flying for standard. Not enough there for standard. So, yeah. Martyr of Dusk. Um. So yeah, this guy. Very good for popper. I think. Very good for limited. Very good for standard. Love this card. I think it's serviceable. Cards like this um, remind me of uh, Elvish Visionary. It's good to have those kinds of cards as. Uh, in formats i think and uh, this meets the requirements of what you're trying to do it gives you a lifelink trigger uh, on you know obviously it, it requires 
investment to get there you have to have this guy die then you have to have that guy create combat damage and blah 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 but it does what you want a card to do and it's reasonable enough um it would have been interesting to see i think if this said enters the battlefield instead of dies but as a common i like this card so good job moment of triumph i like this card too good job wizards you got a plus two plus two trick for one mana and gain two life, which is a requirement of this gain life kind of thing that we have going on. So I actually think this card is underrated. Um, I, I don't know if anybody's rating, like, whatever. <laughs> I think this card is very good and to the point to where it could be very viable in standard. Because while this card, we've known that this kind of combat trick is generally pretty good in limited and lately we've seen very low to low, low curve limited decks um, pick these kinds of heart cards higher because the trades and the tempo is so important in limited is very very critical that these kinds of cards become better and especially at one mana we haven't seen cards like this um, but also with the gain to life it allows this card to be potentially very good for constructed um, it can save creatures in some instances, like with Magma Spray or Harness Lightning or Lightning Strike. Excuse me. Thanks, Stomach. Um, and I think I like seeing cards like this. Good job. Clap. We got Paladin of Atonement, boys. We got a 2-mana 1-1 one, one that I wish was 1-mana. Uh, I'm not going to read out the card, but... Why couldn't this have been one mana? It reminds me so much of Champion of the Parish. It's such, this card is very flavorful. This card is tribal-esque. Uh, it's a cool card. It's a really cool design. It's got the lifelink kind of thing that you want going on. So that's very much what you're looking for out of this tribe. Um, and on theme with the design and whatnot. Very serviceable. Very... Just make it one mana. And if the argument is that one mana this card is too good, then why do you print other cards? Like, I don't want to get into this conversation. It, it just, I understand the concept of a potentially one mana 3-3. Three, three. Oh, shit. But let's think about this. This card can't do much in the intermediary where because it is two mana, that's such a big difference. Think about it like if it was one mana, okay, you, you get in for one point of damage. And your opponent now has to think about the gameplay a little bit. I like that this card's design forces your opponent to think differently about how they would get in for damage or attack or whatever. Like, it's cool like that, but it's also just a 1 1 at the start. Now, obviously, there are anthem effects that we'll talk about later, or lords or whatever, um, which can make this guy bigger. So he becomes something to think about in combat, but. God damn it. At the onset, he is just a 1-1 one, one for 2 mana, and that's not very good. I wish this guy was 1 mana. I think he'd be incredible, and I'd love the flavor and the, the design and all the, these kinds of things right here. These bits are great, but this, this sucks. Anyway, also, I might be cussing. I don't know if I said that in my uh, prologue thing, whatever. Um, I might cuss a little bit. Sorry about that, but that's just how I am. We got... <clears throat> Moving on, Pride of Conquerors, 2 mana, and the introduction of Ascend as a mechanic. We'll talk briefly about Ascend. So, we have the City's Blessing, should have had this pulled up earlier, sorry. Which is, once you have blah 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 blah. This text is whatever, really cool. I don't know how this is going to work like in terms of token. It looks like this is foil uh, to me. So I don't know if that's just going to be Perma, a foil card, or anything. It doesn't really say that here. Um, but in terms of rulings, I didn't look at this earlier when I did this review initially, but isn't a permanent or emblem, and nothing can destroy it or otherwise interact with it. Uh, is only used as a reminder. So kind of like energy. I'm curious where things are going to go in the future for Wizards, because we have these weird design spaces where we have things like emblems and that I think at this point should be defined more clearly because we, we've had rulings where it's like they go to the command zone and they exist but they still can't be interacted with they're just there nothing can touch them, nothing can do anything with them, they're non-interactable and you have this 
and you have things like energy which keep account of your energy counters and it's like these could maybe be interacted with or where do these exist why are these not emblems and just remind it just i feel like they could bundle everything into a nice thing and then create some definitive uh rules behind it that would be good maybe i don't know i don't know i'm harping on this anyway <clears throat> we have ascend this card at two mana for uncommon creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn is fine i don't know about standard playable like I said before, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and I want to give the precursor that when we are reading these Ascend cards, I'm mostly reading the relevant text of this. And I'm not caring as much of this because I think it's a difficult to base this card purely on its Ascend or like involving that. Like I think you have to purely look at it from this point of view because Ascend is something you very much have to work for. And I think most decks, as we see them, at least from a standard point of view, it is going to be difficult to reach Ascend. Um, I think Modern is a lot more achievable, a lot more doable, um, but I'm not sure about too many Ascend cards that are Modern playable. And I think in Limited and Standard, uh, Limited, this kind of mechanic is very much designed for that, to break up board stalls and whatnot. Um, but I don't like this mechanic. I'll talk about this in my full set review in general, but this card as just its relevant text here is decent and limited. And standard, I'm not so sure, but it's cool that they made this card. Excuse me. Radiant Destiny. We had Honor of the Pure, then we had, uh, and obviously some effects in the past like Crusade and shit, but Honor of the Pure is more recent. Then we had Always Watching, and then we have this card, and I think they've progressively gotten worse. I don't know if this is going to be standard playable for vampires. It could be. Uh, this could be for vampires. Um, but this text here, <coughs> not only is it not even that great, like, as a payoff for, like, wow, you achieve this awesome blessing, and you get Vigilance. Like, I guess it plays nicely with vampires sometimes, or something, maybe, kind of, sort of, but, like, not really. I wish it just said flying or something <laughs> or something much more impactful. So just as is, obviously this effect in, throughout Magic has been great. And obviously this effect has been super casual and, you know, could be really good in EDH and all that good stuff. All these good, flavorful, casual, fun, fun kind of things. But again, I don't know about, you know, just this effect in standard and uh, not 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 sure there, boys. Don't want to talk about this card. Don't want to talk about this card too much. In terms of limited design, like, I'm getting tired of these kinds of things. Maybe not did as much, but this kind of thing where it's like, I want to see vanilla creatures that matter. And I want to see more, like, two mana one sevens. Or two mana um, five ones. Or three mana... I don't want to go too far with this. Three mana, four, three. Three mana, four, three? Yeah, because they make three mana, three, fours pretty often. They make three mana, four, threes not as often, at least for sure not at common. Um, that's, a, that's a four mana kind of thing. Uh, I don't like the fact that in Magic, uh, for draft, it's like as you go up the curve... Like, your standard of power and toughness goes down. It's like, if you're going to pay 4 mana for a common, why does it have to be a 2-4, or a 3-3, three, three, or a 4-3, or a 3-4? Like, you're paying 4 mana, at least make your common something. I don't know. This is where, like, in Arena for Hearthstone, it feels cooler to draft. Like, I enjoy the draft experience more from Hearthstone because every card is serviceable and really good stats-wise. And I think I want some cooler stats related minions, especially if you're going to create magic design more around creatures. Let's do something like that. Yeah. Let's get on to this card. Text that is not relevant and also another effect where it would have been cool if the ascend thing was more impactful, like your dude becomes a 4-3 or something like crazy, like where it you know, becomes like Sarah ascendant level of power whenever you get ascend. 
just briefly, I do think Ascend is very achievable in EDH. So maybe in the back of their mind, they designed a lot of these cards with that in mind. Um, but yeah, for standard, this is definitely a standard card. Uh, great in limited, I think, especially with limited being lower to the curve lately. And great in standard, um, it's just a one mana two, one vampire, which vampire is obviously the keyword there that is that is important. But yeah, good card here. <clears throat> Wish there could be um, a little bit different text here than ascend. Uh, but it's cool that we see these one mana two one uncommons that have ad uh, evolved over time. Like we started out with this guy, who was uncommon. Just this dude, and now we go to this guy. Um, it's interesting to see the effects and how they get applied over and over because there's always these white uh, one mana two one dudes. Uh, over time. Slaughter to the Strong. How long are we into this, boys? We've been into this for 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, let's go a little bit quicker. <clears throat> we have this card. Um, now that I've read it further and I've thought about it and whatnot, this card is still shit. Great art. Um, this card is terrible. Uh, I can go in depth here, but like, you're never going to really want this effect on curve at 3. It doesn't do anything at 3. In late game, you're just going to want to pay a four or five minute wrath spell. Really, you just want to kill it, everything that's important. You just want to get everything gone. You want you to leave anything up to your opponent either. Each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls. Like, we've seen this with the new Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, which has not been the same design as, uh, oh god, why can I not remember it? Um, the five mana card from, uh, Origins, that was so great. Oh, God. Holy shit, somebody is going to call me out on this. I can't remember the card right now, and I'll probably think of it later, maybe. Anyway, you just, it, you want things like that, or you want your Fumigates, or whatever. Like, these cards are just very much going to be better, because on on turn three, this doesn't do anything. So it's not, the, the, the cheaper cost isn't helpful. Anyway, I could go on. Basically, this card is trash, pretty much, pretty sure. This dude is interesting for Popper, apparently. I've heard some rumblings about that. Um, I don't think he's that great in limited, and obviously in standard, he's a no-go, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty confident about that. But yeah, and Popper, kind of interesting, cool that they do this, I guess, because it's something different. So, yeah. Uh, Sphinx's Decree. Uh, I think this effect is very unique. Art's really cool. Um, but I don't see it having a place, as far as I'm aware, in anything. Uh, but, and I don't even think it's that good in things like EDH or other older formats. I don't think. Uh, even in, like, Vintage or something. Sometimes effects similar to this see play randomly, but I don't think this is one of them. It is a kind of card that, like, five years down the line could be re-explored again, or ten years down the line, and something makes it relevant. But for now, I don't think this card's... Not at all good, but this dude really great for limited. I love this design. Um, this meets the the benchmarks of stats and really good text here. Like this is really great in limited. Uh, we've seen <sighs> the tri uh, trial of him. No, sorry, cartouche. Oh yeah, lifelink, here we go. So this card has seen play in the standard sideboards lately and has been reasonable um, and it's serviceable because of the lifelink. Obviously its effect can also be more impactful, for instance, against things like mono red, this is pretty good. But uh, if we go back to our shit, uh, this gets you a dude as well. And in Popper, I think this is pretty applicable. There is a mono white, uh, dude deck that is very low to the curve though it's only really playing one mana cards mostly in a couple two mana cards but mostly one mana and all their enchantments and stuff that they put on is one mana as well so i'm not so sure about this three mana it's a little bit too much maybe for that popper deck um it's also interesting that i'm talking about popper more too it's kind of cool um and that's that as an aside but this card is really great for limited um i it might make the cut for Standard. I think it could. It, it could. 
Now the sideboards and whatnot, but I, it's definitely not like a four of like all in every deck kind of thing. I don't think. Um, but cool effect. Glad that they made it. <clears throat> this dude's whatever. Uh, this dude is interesting. Kind of unique. That's about it. <laughs> uh, Temple Altasar. I like this effect. But frankly, I think this will become a bulk rare. Also like the art. Kind of kind of cool. Uh, like my Brontosaurus dudes. Where my bros at, you know? Uh, what's that GameStop guy? <laughs> That's such a good meme. I don't know if anybody's seen it. I could play it right now because it's on stream, but uh, we'll we'll leave it out for now. Anyway, uh, this effect is potentially really cool, really powerful. I don't think it's going to be that great, though, in the end. Um, but, yeah, unique, cool. Maybe I'm wrong, completely wrong about this card. And maybe I'll be completely wrong about Trap Jaw Tyrant. Uh, it meets the requirements of just being a 5-mana five 5-5. Five, five. Like, you, you get that benchmark, and you get a really powerful, potentially... Um, game breaking board state effect if this can consistently be triggered um, I do think rage and rage is easy easily achievable I think given that some of the cards that we have now at our disposal but I you know as mythic and everything I'm not sure where this card's fate's gonna end up I don't think it's gonna be Carnage level, Carnage Tyrant level, good, and I, I don't see much here in the way of cool shit. Um, I think it's fine, and it could maybe be a very chase mythic, possibly. It could be very much underestimating this effect. It's definitely that kind of card where I could be underrating it right now, but I don't think it will pan out the way, and I think it's just going to end up being a medium, slightly below average mythic um, that will fade into... Nothing, not nothingness, but not much. Uh, Zadalpa, Primal Dawn. We got a cool Elder Dinosaur. I like this a lot. I like that they're doing Elder Dinosaur. This text, I think, needs haste to be uh, on there, or lifelink, or both. <clears throat> As is, really cool card with awesome, uh, great art there. Um, but I don't think it's that good. Uh, really casual, flavorful kind of card. Really cool. Uh, cool design. Love it when they do cards that have a bunch of words on them. But could have used a couple more, I think. This card, I talked about this card longer on the preview one. I want to briefly mention that I think this is a call to uh, George Washington. And let's see. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Um... I'm just going to do this because I don't remember the specific battle. Oh, God. Crossing the Delaware. Yeah, there we go. Um, this thing. Where he's kind of looking kind of stoic. He's got his cutlass here, and it's really icy and cold weather and all that good stuff. This is a really famous painting. Um, this guy this for, is, I think, slightly a callback to that. Maybe. Maybe the artist was thinking about that at the time. Anyway, that's a complete aside. The actual card is dog shit uh sorry but it is it's basically cancel at rare uh you're never gonna actively get the payoff here to be very good which is sad i like the idea behind it i like the idea of making a one mana counter spell but it's not really a one mana counter spell it's just pretty much trash <clears throat> aquatic incursion this needed to be three mana i'll make this brief at three mana this would have been pretty sweet at four mana, I think it's pretty much unplayable. Uh, really cool for limited though. Uh, I like the art. Uh, kind of cool card, but unique. But it's it's becoming more apparent that unique is not all that you need. You need more. Uh, anyway, crafty cup purse. Uh, some EDH related thing. Cool, funny art. Um, could definitely see play in EDH, but outside of that, I don't think as much. So. Love this card. I praised this card very highly earlier, and I'm going to do the same again. This is a cantrip that's tempo and removal, and uh, I think really cool. And also at common is also, um, I don't know quite about Fur Popper because this is 
obviously a keyword that matters. This card can definitely be underrated. If Merfolk becomes a thing, I think this is actually a very fine option. Uh, because the cantrip plus removal is a very powerful effect. And the tempo, I think, is what you're looking for here. And I think in a lot of scenarios, this is actually pretty fine. And even at sorcery speed, it replaces itself and can get in the way for combat damage. And it sets your opponent theoretically back a turn. Not quite, but um, that tempo loss for them is pretty significant. I like this card a lot. I really do. I like this card a lot, too. The art is really intriguing. Um, I, I don't really know as much what's going on here. I haven't. I still haven't quite grasp what is going on. It's kind of a really intriguing picture to look at. Maybe I just completely misevaluating, but it's like you're inside a map, but in reality, and it's it just really cool. <clears throat> but the actual effect, I think, is really, really sweet. Uh, I talked about, like, the initial payoff you get for one mana, you get uh, relevant stats, and you get a effect that indefinitely unlimited sets this card to be a very high pick, I think. And in standard, I think could also be reasonable. It depends on if there's a deck that supports it. Uh, but if this just triggers once, you've gotten your money's worth. And if it triggers a second time, it's done its job very finely. Uh, but this as a drop-off is a thing to factor in. But I think in the decks that it's designed for, uh, it won't be as relevant. Something to note. I'm going to quickly remember this card. This guy. Uh, in limited, this is a really powerful effect. And in standard, this could be a really powerful effect. Uh, just throwing that out there. Um, something to take note. I think those two cards go hand in hand really well. We'll talk about that card later. But uh, this dude uh, is very good at limited. I don't like playing against a card like this at all. But yeah that's about all i'm gonna say there not really standard playable here uh expel from araska is an ascend thing that is strictly worse than perilous voyage perilous voyage says if it's targeting a thing of cmc two or less then you get a scry two and so this ascend is again we talk about we're not really considering it as part of the card uh, in evaluating it anyway <clears throat> obviously if you have it then this tempo gain is huge, uh, obviously. But that's a very late game, very like Christmas Wonderland kind of effect that we don't know quite uh, just how good that is. Um, because it's tough to see what kind of deck heavily relies on Ascend as a mechanic. Um, so just as is, without Ascend, this card is much worse than Perilous Voyage, which is the card that was in the last set that is also pretty much not seen play. But... <laughs> In the right kind of merfolk deck, I guess. These cards are pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Maybe merfolk being a thing could push these cards into seeing play again. Or not again, but uh, what we used to see, like Disperse and whatnot, back in the day, and obviously Vapor Snag and whatnot. Uh, these could be good, possibly. But it's still not as good as Perilous Voyage, so, in my opinion. This card is uh, similar to Mystic Retrieval, but at a cost reduction. It is double blue. It's story related. Art's pretty sweet. I don't know the flavor behind it because I've read the story or whatever. But um, obviously it's Jace regaining his shit back, which is whatever, I guess. Um, I don't like Jace as a character. And the flavor is, I guess, meh. And I think this effect is cool. This dude is whatever, just standard counter spell for limited. We have an effect here that I think is very flavorful, also a story spotlight. Could be good in some EDH decks. I think Windfall is just better in a lot of scenarios. I think this card's cool, but obviously it's not meant for standard or anything, at least I don't think. I like this card. Great and absolutely phenomenal in Limited. Absolutely phenomenal. It's also a, a common. So this, I think, is pretty reasonable, I think, in Popper. Should be. Um, 
this is new, and I, th I like this kind of effect. It's also a pirate standard. I think this could be playable. Possibly. Kumana's Awakening. Uh, I love this card. And it's uh, just another, like, Rites of Flourishing slash uh, Howling Mind slash... Uh, oh, God. Uh, dictate of Crufix kind of uh, effect that is really cool. And it makes Ascend actually... Uh, something to strive for and part of the deck building process when you think about this kind of card and when you do get to that state this card is just very good and in edh i think it's also uh really sweet so i like this card uh, excuse me stomach i think i'm gonna be right back i'm just gonna take a quick break um shit hopefully i can maybe cut up the vod i'm not quite sure um be right back sorry I very much apologize for that. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> and I see why people break these up usually. Very, very, very sorry about that. Okay, so we have done Commander's Awakening. We have the guy I talked about earlier, Miss Cloaked Herald. I like this card. I think pretty good and limited. Generally, we've seen lower to the curve strategies, and this card meets that mark. Uh, relevant ability. And I think in standard, it's uh, serviceable. And maybe core to the deck. Especially when we see the legendary card that has been spoiled later uh, and the two drop lord. This card is very good. I think it's exactly what you want. Love this card. <coughs> Negate. This is what I was talking about earlier for I think what might become my favorite art in the set. I'll have to take a double check later, but holy fuck. Villanueve. This is incredible. Holy shit. This is gorgeous. I mean... That's incredible. I want a play mat of this or a print. I'm, I think I'm definitely going to get a print of this and make a frame and everything because this is just absolutely gorgeous. I wish this art could have been used on a cooler card than Negate. That we've seen for now the fifth or sixth set in a row or whatever the hell it is. And it's like, why are you, why are you doing this over and over? With new art that's sick as fuck. Uh, and each time it seems like the art gets better. And this could be a different card. This could be a really cool card. And I don't know. 
So my hopes and dreams dashed. We next have ne Nezahal. Big dude dragon guy from That's Actually a Dinosaur in the Sea, which is super dope. And he meets the bar, I think, or has exceeded the bar for previous big fat dudes that are blue that have been reserved to bulk rares that might actually this time around be really good uh, for EDH, I think. This text right here, maximum hand size, is uh, something you're looking for sometimes in just a casual kind of effect. Obviously, they can't be countered, just a nice upside. This effect, I think, is very deceptive and very good. Um, very snowball-y. And you at least get one card, I think, pretty much. Uh, and uh, I think if you're getting three cards out of this guy, it's just incredible. And obviously, more than that is something very nice. And I think the uh, claws here can also be... Uh, very strong, so I like this guy. He's cool. He's a big dude. He, he he Gucci. You know what I'm saying? We got released to the wind, which is trash. And exactly for the reasons I was talking about earlier with this guy and common. Love this card. Um, this card for the opposite reasons is like if you read the text on it, um, why? Yeah, all of the reason to play this card is for the tempo, and you lose that by the second clause there, and I just think this card is horrible. It's frustrating. I guess, theoretically, there's combos that you can do with exiling your own things, uh, and that's interesting, maybe, and that may push this card into some crazy realm of cool. Also, I don't know if this is Tashana from the previous set, Ixalan, or who this is, but this art is sweet. Um, yeah, I don't ultimately know how I feel about this card, because there could be some combo potential, but I think it, if in used as a removal spell, it is horrible. Yeah. A river Darter is a merfolk dude that is interesting. They print this kind of effect for limited. Um, but ultimately, I don't like it. <clears throat> That's about that. And we got Brainstorm, bro. He's he's a he's wise. Uh, this motherfucker is probably. <sighs> I don't want to say he's not going to see play in standard. I initially, evaluated him as mainly Merfolk, and there's better Merfolk for four mana, which we see here, which we'll get to in a second. But this guy, uh, I don't know. I guess in controlling kind of shells, he's good. And what kind of what you want and might replace Glimmer of Genius, maybe? I don't know. Um, I don't know about this guy. He's a cool dude. Really cool effect. I'm probably going to see play in EDH or random ancillary kind of formats and whatnot. Um, maybe more than that. I don't know. Like He has a really good upside. In standard, you're not utilizing this as effect that much because even though you get the manipulation and the card advantage, you don't have anything to abuse it like fetch lands, which make this effect super over the top. Um, cool that it's been made, though. Really unique card, so I like that. Uh, reasonable combat dude uh, and big butt guy for limited. Not standard playable. Not standard playable. Uh, here's what we're talking about with the four drop Merfolk, and I think this rewards playing Merfolk very adequately, and is what you're looking for as a quote unquote top end in terms of you flood the board with these small dudes that get gradually larger. You get effects that um, reward you for uh, having small dudes that connect for damage, and then you get this nice effect here this biden of thassa effect that i ophidian kind of thing that is just great on multiple creatures and flooded the board kind of strategies and i like this guy i think he will see play i hope merfolk becomes a thing and uh, if so i think he's there um and also interestingly for modern he may replace master waves to an extent i also still don't know about modern where merfolk goes and it's gotten some upgrades um, I was talking with some other guys previously about the potential of Master Waves just being removed from that deck because of the legendary guy. 
uh, that we'll talk about obviously later. But this Oracle, I like this card and may see some play in modern, possibly, possibly. Although there is a uh, hush hush uh, collect a company. Let's think about that for modern Merfolk, just real quick in your back of your mind. This card wouldn't make the cut, so if we went that route, then he wouldn't be there, I don't think. So anyway. Um, not much commentary here. Love this. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief because obviously we've gone on for uh, quite a bit now. And I love the fact that they brought him back. I love the fact that, or she, and I love the fact that uh, this is a thing. And there needs to be more of this. There needs to be more reprints of cards like this. And it also matters. And it's also going to be really great in standard. Uh, fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Seriously. Like, props. Uh, more of this, please. Uh, when I first immediately saw this card, I was absolutely dumbfounded as to why this card was good. Uh, I thought this card was trash, absolute horrible dog shit. And then, I don't know why, but flying is underneath this ability, and I didn't see that initially. There is flying on this card. Uh, without the context of flying, I just, my brain was like, really? Why is this an uncommon? Why? And it's just like... <laughs> but with flying... Um, yeah, it's still pretty... Mm, I don't think it makes the cut. I don't think it makes the cut. Uh, in limited, this is phenomenal. Um, but I don't think it makes the cut for standard. Sorry. Um, pretty good limited guy. Not much after that. Pretty good limited guy. Uh, and also potentially popper. I'm not quite sure. I think this could see play on popper. Uh, hex proof is great, and um, but stats is uh, five mana is a lot to ask for just a three two when you can get that in one and two mana cards and whatnot that trade with us. So yeah, probably not very good. Uh, good and limited, I think. Yeah, um, uh, great card. Um, as you can see, we compare this guy to the white dude that we had before. That was three mana two three fire. So we see the differences in how the card's designed. Uh, this only costs one blue instead of the two white, so you can see that there. Um, whatever. And this guy. Uh, so, Time Stream Navigator. I'm personally, like, I don't get super giddy over uh, take turn effects and Mind Slaver and shit like that. Like, that's not my, like, cool nostalgic kind of where I get a lot of fun from. Um, I love the appeal of it, but I guess this card's cool in EDH, maybe. I mean, obviously Ascend is more of a thing, but even then it's just a 2-mana 1-1, one, one, and you have to wait, and, and there's things that can kill it, and I don't know. I don't like this card. I don't like this card. The more that I look about it, look at it, the more I don't like this card. Um, I could talk more about it, but that's I'm going to keep my thoughts really minimum on that. It's just, I, don't, I, I don't like it. This card I love. Uh, yeah, this card's really nice. Um, evasion, efficient, and a cool effect. Uh, that makes combat really interesting and makes your other dudes get better because of this effect. So I like this guy. Good job, Warkite Marauder. You get the jab. This dude, I don't want to talk about it as much, but like, it's bullshit. Like, why not just make Claustrophobia? Or if you're going to do a new effect, just make it two mana. Come on, like, I mean, is that really that much better? Like, maybe in Popper that's great or something, I don't know, some cursory thing. I don't think that card would be oppressive, even in Standard. And I think the... Di I okay, I, yeah, I don't know. Black, we got an interesting, possibly sideboard card for Vampires. Mm, I think, yeah. For Vampires, I think this could be a good sideboard card. We'll see what the meta shapes up. Obviously, it's a meta-dependent kind of card, but uh, cool effect. Whatever, dude. Uh, this guy is Champion of Dusk, and I don't quite know if I like this card. Like, from the outside, and just taking a brief look at him, I like this card. I think it's cool. Um, it is flavorful. It is a 5-mana 4-4, which kind of sucks, but the effect is cool when you just immediately look at it. But when you take a further look, let's look at Star Wars as an example. 
on the out, outside it's like oh wow star wars yeah i'm talking about the new one is is super sweet whatever blah 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 yay and then when you look further sorry that i'm bringing this in uh it, it just gets shittier and shittier and shittier and worse and worse and worse 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 oh my god I have problems with that movie the more that I look at it. But sorry, Ed and all of my other Stan- Star Wars friends that <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this dude is worse the more you look at him because it's not a May ability. And so even though that this card is great, if you get a good scenario where you have a lot of vampires and you get a ton of card advantage and great, but you just lost like four or five, six life. Even though you have life gain effects, I don't know how this is going to play in. Maybe, maybe, I'm really undervaluing the life gain side of things. And if the strategy pans out perfectly, this could be a great top end because then you fully take advantage of the life gain uh, effects and make that amount to um, tangible card advantage in a top end threat. But it is 5 mana and only a 4 4. So I don't know. I think this card is on the cusp. Probably future bulk rare though. Maybe. I don't know. It could be good. Who knows? What the fuck? Not basically what I'm saying is I'm not sure where I fall on this on this guy, but cool effect. Um this would be also more EDH playable, obviously, if it didn't say vampires. <laughs> um that would be a completely different story. Uh, but now we're into Dark Inquiry. Just kind of crappy. Just kind of crappy. Dead Man's Chest. We have, like, further away from the mic, sorry. Uh, still might be. Um, okay. We have a thing that does a cool thing that is tough to get that is, uh, who knows, um, cool effect, unique. Uh, but I, I don't know um, where it's going to fall. I don't think it's going to be constructed playable. And it's in a fairy Christmas magical land of magic. Yeah. This guy is limited fodder. Cool guy. Um, that's about it. Dire Fleet Poisoner. We have a unique effect that I actually want to know the rules text on this. Um, when it says enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus plus one and gains death touch until end of turn. This doesn't have a you may target or like possibly target or whatever, um, but it still has flash. And I'm wondering like to even cast this card, can you even just, I don't know. I, I need to figure out like if you have to cast a specifically on a target attacking pirate. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's probably a no. That you can probably just cast this whenever. I wish I knew the answer to this. Uh, I really wish. I don't know if it's possible. Can you... Let's see. Dire Fleet Poison. I wonder if they have it. Maybe it's in Gather? I don't know. Oh, it is? Okay. Um... Oh, what? Bikes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you can cast it whenever. Uh, if that is the case, this card is great. You guys have probably read it enough now on screen. Uh, yeah, I love this card. If sorry, you can cast it whenever. Fits right into the curve, has a really unique, cool effect, uh, flexible, flash is awesome, and uh, has better stats with your other pirates, and just does a cool slew of things. Uh, great, great, great card, if that's the case. I'm, it is kind of worded very precariously for me there. Obviously, maybe I'm just being a little bit uh, weird about it, but yeah, cool card. We're going to go ahead and say, based on that Reddit thread and other shit, that uh, this card can just be cast whenever. Uh, although it is strange that it has that. <coughs> Dusk Charger is a horse. Um, Dusk Legion Zealot is great. Love this card. Popper, all-star probably. A vampire. 
card advantage and reminds me of Elvish Visionary. Very cool that they did this, and I think it's going to be an impact that we see ripple through the future years of Magic, just like Elvish Visionary pops up in random places at random times uh, for different reasons. So this being created, it makes me happy. So awesome. Like, I think the Elvish Visionary sounds a lot better than Dusk Legion Zealot, though. I wish the, the actual name of the card could have been a little bit more not generic, random, like, wordage. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fathom Fleet Border. Pretty fucking dog shit. For Runner, we have another one in that cycle, and... It says the main text when it enters when another one enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Uh, if pirates were merfolk or vampires, this effect would be very good because you get a lot of tokens and a lot of small guys. Uh, and for pirates, not as much. So, card's cool. Might see some play because this. Text is better than the ones that we looked at before. Uh, yeah. Cool card. I should talk more about that, but anyway. Uh, uh, Golden Demise. Uh, this is just like, why? Like, I guess cool that you made the card. Um, interesting that Vraska's here. But at the same time... Uh, <sighs> Like you, every set Wizards is just continuing to print these negative two, negative two, uh, kind of cards, and we see that over and over in different ways. And there's been better ones than others, um, but this one I think you know, like the ascend part is, it doesn't make sense. It's like if you're playing this card as a board sweeper because you're behind, you're not gonna have ascend, so then it just kills your guys or like this. I don't know. Like the effects don't make sense together. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know what happened here. Pretty sure this card is going to be playable if Pirates ever becomes a thing and may just fit into the mono black deck that currently exists, possibly, maybe, sort of. I don't know. This card appears fine. So, reasonable, good card, popper, all that good stuff. Card is trash. Trash, 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 trash card is worse than murder so this is, just plays in more into what i was talking about with like the limited design and you know like we have an overcosted pacifism and now we have an overcosted murder and it's like okay uh, i don't know wizard um yeah it's gonna be great and limited i guess probably maybe it's too slow i don't even know with these kinds of effects it seems like they're getting worse i don't know Masterminds acquisition. A tutor. Demonic tutor. That or can get a card from your sideboard. I like this card. It's just Diabolic Tutor Strictly Upgrade. This card is amazing for future playability in uh, EDH, actually. Because, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure you can have a sideboard in legal tournaments if uh, you go to, like, a Star City Open or something and you play a commander. And generally, people don't think about that that much. But uh, this is cool. I like this card a lot. And apparently it's Story Spotlight. Um, another piece of a nefarious puzzle. I'm not sure what's going on here at all in terms of, like, flavor story-wise. I uh, like this card being made, though. I really like it. Uh, standard playability, maybe. You can kind of get like pieces that you need to help combat a certain strategy or whatever, but I don't think it's as potent as an effect like this, not for the mana or anything, but for an effect like this would have in modern. Uh, like, for instance, if this costs three mana in modern, I think it would potentially see play. But a four mana, I think, too expensive. It might still, I don't, I don't know, because it can grab whatever catch-all kind of card you want. Um, too slow, I think, for modern. I think, uh, but really cool card. Mausoleum Harpy is limited Gucci Mane. 
Moment of craving is trash. Now you get to gain two life, which again plays into the vampires thing, so it might see some play. Um, because it's an on theme effect for vampires. Um, it's not as mana efficient as disfigure. It would be really cool if this card was just disfigure with the gain two life. It would be really cool. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure where this has a place. Also. Is this background art the same as... Hold on. Did I just see something weird? Or am I looking at the same... Sorry that I'm doing whatever the hell I am doing right now, but maybe I just saw the same... No, look. There we go. Okay, look at this art. The background. Who is this? Stephen B Belladin or some shit? Uh, look at this background art. Okay, think about that for a second. Just have that in mind, have that in mind, have that in mind, have that in mind. And... Blah. Horse dude. And now, and... Yeah. Okay. Steve Belladin. Yeah, I just found something. Wow, shit. Okay. Alright, um... Oaksworn Vampire. Sorry about that. Uh, is pretty cool. Your best field tap, uh, Diagraph Ghoul, um, Arcaning, and if you gain life, you may cast it from your graveyard. So another th card that is part of this gain life, um, idea. I like this card, and I think there can be something built around this, but again, the gain life parts have to be really efficient and really good to make this doable. Because this is all very mana intensive, and it's like, what is the idea of vampires that we're really going to go for? Are we going to go for a mid-range kind of thing, which I think is what it's going to end up having to be? Or this, like, super flood out, like, play your dudes on curve, like, and slowly get more... I, I don't know where it's going to finally be, but I think uh, it could pan out pretty well, possibly, for vampires. Interesting card. I don't want to talk about this too much. It's kind of whatever. Uh, chup, chup 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 uh he hungry he hungry uh <laughs> this is sweet i think personally strictly better than necrotal and we'll see play and it's really cool and it's going to be interesting how it plays out in the meta um because it's a double black costed card I love this, I love this, I love this, I love this. Um, this is the kind of good, gooey, like, yes, like, like this, get this shit kind of going of printing cards like this that are common, uncommon, that are sweet with really cool, relevant abilities and costed just fine and well-statted for what they do. And I'm excited. I, I like the fact that this is a thing. So good job there. Plus one. He's a target creature with power three or less. Um, okay. Okay, poor Merfolk, dude. Um, yeah, with a lot of relevant cards at that three power mark, I think this is pretty efficient. I'm gonna, going to see play, I think. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, things could shake up differently. Um, but I think as removal and standard stands, if black is being played as a color, then I think this card fits into it, and I think this effect is sweet. Uh, it is three mana, so you're not gaining too much there, mostly. Pretty sure you're not gaining any kind of tempo or anything, so that kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, we play Heroes Downfall, we play Murder sometimes, we play Stasis Snare sometimes, so depending on what's going on, this could see play, possibly. Recover or whatever. Um, this card is sweet. So it's like the same kind of idea of a Silver Girl Adept kind of thing. Um, but you can see the difference between Silver Girl Adept and this card. Like, I'm pretty sure this card is just a lot worse. It is aggressively statted. Um. I'm not sure where this is going to end up. The lifelink 
is really crucial here. So it could be a very core element of the deck. And again, I don't know where vampires will actually end up, but the lifelink is important here. So it could be good. Tetsamok, Primal Death. I like this card, though, by the way. Like uh, The art's also really cool. We got one of my favorite cards from this set. I have no fucking clue how much play it's going to see. But it's a really unique design. We have a 6-mana six 6-6 six, six Death Touch legendary dino dude who looks fucking dope as shit. Uh, and a an ability that we've never, I don't think, seen something like this before. Pay a black, reveal it, put a prey counter on target creature, activate this ability only during your turn. When it enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponent's control with a prey counter on it. I like this. Um, from a design element, I don't know how pushed this will become for standard. It's also legendary, and you also have to have it in your hand for multiple turns, and your opponent has to have creatures that are relevant to where this gets used, and you also have to use mana to be able to do it. Um, so, like, those are all things. But in EDH, you can all... This is just... <laughs> holy shit. Like, like when you have uh, Cabal Coffers and all these other effects, and you get a play, you could just go... Like, oh, this, this card is, is really cool. Um, and I love it. I love it personally. I don't even know if it's going to see play in standard. I like the fact that it's a black dinosaur. It's like, it's really cool that that's a thing. Um, because we haven't seen really any black dinosaurs, which is really strange to me. Um, at least I don't think in, in regular Inkspawn. I think that should have been done more. I don't know why it couldn't have been in like every fucking color. Because uh, I think it would be cool to have like really intelligent, smart um, blue dinosaurs. Like, imagine that, guys. Come on. Like, just from a purely flavor flavorable point of view. Like, they did that with dragons. I get the fact that there's multiple tribes going on here. So I see the balancing and color kind of thing play out, but oh, that would be so cool. Uh, holy fuck, I just, you know. Anyway, this guy is sweet. Uh, I don't know where he's going to end up in standard. I don't know much else about that, but it, cool, cool dude, dude. Cool, cool guy. Tomb Robber. Um... I don't quite think this gets there. I don't think. The discard, there's not really a payoff currently. Like for benefiting from discarding in standard. Imagine if this was back in uh, Shadows days. Menace is like whatever. And you explore, which is really cool. And it's like you're trading the discard here as a negative to get the payoff here for the card advantage. Um, and he gets bigger potentially as well with the explorer, so he could become large, and the the menace is blah, 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 blah. the menace becomes uh, better. <laughs> God damn it! Um, I don't like it. It's a cool card, I guess. Maybe EDH playable. I don't really. Yeah, there's cool things you can do with this card in other formats for sure, for sure, for sure. But in standard, uh, not so much. Open. Four mana, two four. Flying. <sighs> Mythic. This card makes me sad. You gotta have this. You gotta have this. You took up your mythic slot for a vampire. Made a shitty statted card. Right? That could be fine, like flying 2-4 four for 4 can still be good if the effect is reasonable, right? But you did this. If you have the blessing, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where blah 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 is that mana cost. Incredible ability. But like, come on, let's go back to Ascend, and I, I guess I'm going to talk about this later. Like, why is this a mechanic that is just so, like, I have no idea how to evaluate this, because it seems so, like, fairy Christmas land, 
I mean, obviously this effect is good. The if the stats can be fine. It's a vampire. Like, why couldn't you have just done this on a different card? I don't know. You know, I'm pretty disappointed by this guy. I think it's a missed design opportunity. Love the art. Um, there's some interesting art exploration with this set, like uh, some like nitty gritty kind of shit, like and some very obscure kind of backgrounds and stuff. That's kind of cool. Not so much this like this kind of thing, right? This is a lot different art than this. Not even close. So I I like that they have this kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm pretty sad by this guy. This guy is shit. P possibly fine and limited, but, you know. Bonus hunger. Each opponent sacrifices a creature and ascend. Thing. Really, really, really cool for EDH. And this is where uh, ascend becomes cool. Um, this effect is fine. Sometimes, obviously, in EDH you get tokens and random shit, so not as much. But uh, this thing is really impactful. This secondary ability, which makes us send cool and flavorful and just a cool card. But um, obviously, not as much standard playable. I mean, three mana edict is fine. You know, obviously, this is a blowout if you get to that point, so it could see some play. But uh, yeah, it's tough to evaluate that. But it, fine. I like this card. This is what I'm talking about. This is a common that has a relevant ability and relevant text. Uh, and is not like over costed really or like too demanding on color. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to play out. I don't think it's going to play out in a standard deck at all. Uh, but I like the card. So yeah, design's really cool. Moving on to red, Blood Sun. Uh, I could talk about this card for a while. And uh, it's super dope. Who made this art? M -ran -m I don't know who some of these artists are. These are like brand new dudes. Um, this is cool. Like uh, The thing with this card is... It's good and bad for modern, and not like um, for the format health. I'm not talking about the same way that Blood Moon is. I'm talking about good and bad, like it can be good and it can be bad. Uh, it makes your opponent's um, dual lands and shit come into play untapped. Same with yours, though. And it doesn't punish mana the same way that Blood Moon does, but it restricts fetch lane to fetch lands which is a huge part so there's some pluses and minuses i don't think it's overall as good as blood moon because you're not hitting as many lands because you're only getting fetch lands most of the time obviously there's corner cases where in edh or um you know like your gavany townships of the world or your nykthoses or well i don't even know if that counts there's a lot of rules decks associated with blood sun uh, this is going to cause headaches and shit. I don't fucking know. Um, the cantrip is obviously really nice. And that m adds an element to this card that Blood Moon doesn't have. And I don't know where it's going to end up. I think it will definitely see play in different capacities. That's all I can really say on that. Obviously, really cool card. Cool that they did this. I have no idea where it's going to end up or the how heavily it will impact other formats. But it will impact them i think and to the extent that it'll see play um but whether people like actively design decks around this card the same way that they do with blood moon i'm not so sure or like play around it like the same way that they play around blood moon those are interesting topics that i'm I haven't fully figured out yet and that's just a we'll figure that out in time i guess but i do think it'll see play the cantrip is uh is something so uh good limited card I don't know about standard. I don't think so. Um, interesting, like, kind of what they're doing with art here. I like this. This is a Brass's Bounty is, like, uh, Boundless Realms, but way fucking worse. Way fucking worse. Um, there's, uh, as we get into red and green, there's a lot of cards. I am building a Omnath 
Locus of Rage EDH, EDH deck right now. And there's a lot of cards that actually appeal to that, and a lot of land matters kind of things. Um, and this one I think is pretty bad, though. But, you know. Serviceable Unlimited. Um, interesting effect. I don't know if it can play out in standard. I don't think it will. In limited, this is a nightmare and makes things really cool. Uh, so, cool limited card for sure. Uh, I like the design. Mm, don't think it'll see much standard play. I don't think. Yeah, like I'm thinking about other pump spells right lately had that have been very good. You know, like I'm trying to compare it to blossoming defense and other shit and. This just doesn't fit in, I don't think. Interesting card, very good and limited. I don't think is going to be in standard. Okay, now we have Daring Buccaneer, which is a 1 mana 2-2, two -two, pretty much. And when you have cards like this, that's what puts a strategy like Pirates as a very much possibility, especially if we think about like the... 2 mana 2-2 two, two flash death touch dude. Um, I think there's still some problems with pirates. I don't know if they have like a full identity yet because they have this like raid kind of thing going on. They have this like treasure kind of thing going on. And like overall, I'm not quite sure where they're going to end up. Um, I like the design around them. Like I don't know how I feel about them as a tribe because a lot of them are just humans, you know? So it's not in the same way as like elves and merfolk and dinosaurs and stuff where you get excited because of that it's like they're also just humans so a lot of there's a lot of crossover there and as an independent tribe or so to speak i yeah i don't know how that like flavor wise it's like whatever okay they're just like pirates and obviously there's like orcs and like other kinds of things but a lot of them are humans and uh yeah it's interesting um to think about from that vantage point i don't think many people think about it like that but anyway uh the question is if they're going to be if this is going to be fine in standard and i think it will in but yeah it depends on pirates as a whole and i i don't know where that is so we'll find out Darfleet daredevil is a very cool kind of effect that can be really good um, but you obviously have to pay the mana, and there's some catch-alls, but you still get to exile the card. It's still a 2-1 first strike that I'm pretty sure is going to be playable in standard. Um, question in modern, probably not. Maybe. Maybe. I think the body is good enough. And first strike is good in some regards. Like, uh, there's some creatures that it definitely just blanks. Mmm... And the effect is fine. Like, this could end up being okay. Uh, it could. Tough to judge this card. It's tough to judge this card. But I think it's a really good one to have in the set, and I'm glad that they made this kind of effect. We got Itali. Italy. <laughs> Primal Storm. This is awesome as in art. Uh, just, just gives me so many chills back to, like, um, it's, um, fuck my life, um, Jurassic Park, sorry, before, like, the new movies, at least, and uh, they went the super cheesy route, but then they made the bigger and the bigger guy, and, um, yeah, like, the lightning involved with this is just really dope, um, love the art here. They've done some really great jobs uh, with some of these art uh, cards art and just coming out of the uh, well, just uh, yeah good job and Raymond Swan line he's done some great stuff lately anyway six mana six six uh, when it attacks exile the top card of each player's library then you may cast any number of non land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs this is a really cool effect so similar to the blue dude um. This is great for EDH. I may even put this in Omna, oh, just because I like this card so much. Like, it doesn't do anything synergistic with my deck, and, like, if I really wanted it to be spiky, like, I wouldn't play this card, but, like, oh, my God, like, I just love this kind of card without paying their mana costs. 
then you may can. So it's whenever it attacks, then you may cast. So it's like, I'm pretty sure you have to cast this still in combat. Like, I don't think you get the opportunity to do this in your in step or like whenever, obviously, or your second main phase is like as part of an attack trigger, you exile it, then you may cast it. Otherwise, it's just exiled, right? So this happens during combat. So there could be some really interesting things that occur. Um, you don't get to play things at instant speed or, well, you are, I guess, but, you know what I mean, like, later on in the turn or later in the game or, like, anything like that. It doesn't have that, I'm pretty sure, because it's part of that effect resolving, that, that trigger, uh, whenever uh, attack. Um, but anyway, cool card, really cool card. Uh, it might see standard play. I, I think it needed to have, like, a keyword to make it. Mm, excuse me, hiccups. Doable. Fanatical Firebrand is really cool for Popper, really cool for just uh, p Pirate, Goblin, like, a cool effect. Sweet card. Do more of that, please. That's all I gotta say. We have, in the cycle of the Forerunner, or whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have it deal one damage to each creature. So obviously, in if uh, agreeance with Enrage, an enabler for that so they go hand in hand like this card and your other dinosaurs like they they help each other out and i don't know how it works overall because it is four mana so we'll see what's going to happen with this card i don't quite know where dinosaurs is going to play into the total realm of things form of the dinosaur there's already been stuff discussed about this guy uh, i don't and this is obviously still going at length we're at one hour and 30 minutes in holy shit um, but we have your life total becomes 15. Uh, wonky kind of shit going on. I don't, it's just really interesting, really flavor. Yeah, cool card. Um, limited. Limited. I don't think it's good enough for standard. Maybe. There's, there's, a, there's definitely better choices at this point. So, limited card. Good for limited, but Muni. I actually want to talk about this card. Uh, one mana sorcery. Target a creature an opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that player controls. So, like, I thought about this card the first time I saw it. And it's really cool that this card is one mana and it's a unique design. Look at the art, it's great. Like, it's a new thing for, again, a um, common and. It's just a really powerful effect if you can get it to match up. And I thought about like a lot of the played cards, and it's like, well, if you have a Rogue Refiner and a World of Virtuoso, you can play that out too. They both can kill each other, depending on what you want to kill. Obviously, probably World of Virtuoso, but they both can kill each other. You can kill a Long Tusk Cub. In some cases, you can make your Long Tusk Cub kill your World of Virtuoso. You can make your Long Tusk Cub kill a Glory Bringer, or vice versa. Or like, there's uh, a lot of cool things you can do here. So as long as Mono Red is a thing, or if Pirates is a thing with aggressive curve, um, or other strategies. Uh, this is reasonable and good and it's efficient at one mana, but it's a sorcery. If this card was instant, it'd be fucking sweet. It'd be so sweet. And it makes me think, I wonder, it'd be interesting to think of this card as instant and uncommon. And I want them to make this card at instant and uncommon at some point in the future. Uh, but... This card is going to go over, under the radar of a lot of people, I think, um, but could definitely see play in a lot of sideboards or even main decks in some cases, depending on how the format shapes up, um, and be really good, really efficient, uh, cool card, um, cool design, so I like the art. And it's just like a one-word card. Like Stuff like this is traditionally like really cool. Uh... We have a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it's dealt damage, deal 5 damage to target creature and opponent controls for 4 mana. Um, the more that I think about this, the more I don't like this card. Except in limited. Yeah. 
I don't know. There's like weird, like wonky, like does your opponent attack into here, or does it mean that they have to stifle, like figuring out when to play their things or when they attack? Or it could be good. Um, it could play out well. I don't know if it's gonna get to that point though. We have a four mana three four. It makes me bored that it's a four mana three four instead of a three mana three four, and it's just like I don't know, like. Why can't it just be a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four common? Why? Why can it not be? Would it really be that good? I guess. I don't know. You made, you made a common at 3-mana that can deal 4 damage, but... Whatever. Whatever. Card is shit. Too expensive. Card is really good. Reckless Rage. Four damage to target creature you don't control, and two damage to target creature you control. Um, it can do enrage stuff. It can potentially be really good trade for one mana. Oh, I should have said that differently. And not necessarily a trade, like you're losing your guy and your opponent's losing their guy, and that's the trade, and you're losing a card off. I meant trade is like the trade off can work out like if you target a big dude on your guy your end and but you remove a spell for one mana like obviously that's great so um i think this could play out to be very good uh, actually because i think you'll have enough tar targets on your side that uh, can make it work obviously there's some board states where this is not that great and it's card disadvantage but sometimes it can still be reasonable even if you kill off a smaller dude mm, to kill their big guy so Great card. We have Rekindling Phoenix. Four mana, four, three, flying. Uh, when it dies, create an 01 elemental token. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature and return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Funnily enough, um, the um, Omnath deck that I play is very reliant on elementals. Like, obviously, that's, like, one of the big themes of the deck. So I'm, like, wondering if this could even be playable. Because it's repeatable when it dies. Create an 0-1 elemental. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it and return it to the battlefield. So it's a repeatable trigger of an elemental dying for free. It can actually be interesting in Omnath. This is a complete aside to the actual quality of this card. Actual quality of this card. First of all, art is really cool. Another element of going in a different direction, kind of, sort of, maybe, of just showing, like, a cool side of stuff. I like this art a lot. It's really symbolic, um, really in your face, and I like that. Mythic, so important for red. And I think pretty good. It's basically a 4-mana four 4-3 four, flyer, which is great, that repeatedly comes back. Um, but it, it's like... You have to get the elemental to die on your upkeep. It can't just be the elemental dies. Uh, yeah, like you have to sacrifice at your upkeep. So a lot worse. And it would have been just cool if the elemental died, then you get it back. Um, I don't know. The flavor of this card is kind of off. The, the actual text of this card is kind of off. But I think in some realm it's interesting because if it works out it's just repeatedly coming back and i like that i don't know card is probably not going to make the cut probably not going to be a chase card um it's interesting there's not a lot of like chase kind of cards for this set for so i'm just curious how the value is going to play out at least i don't see this card as being chase i don't see that white dinosaur dude being chase and black mythic do we even this guy is not going to really be Chase. And Blue Mythic guy is not really going to be Chase, as far as I'm aware. So, a lot of misses on a small set here for, like, Chase Mythics. Anyway. A really good card. <coughs> also, a card that says C Red. So, I like this. Uh, just, it's cool. Um... Sure. Yeah. Yeah.
here. Um, fine for uh, limited. It's a fine card, I guess. So. Uh, obviously, great for limited. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just a two mana two two, basically. Just imagine is that. Um, cool effect. Yep. Uh, this card upsets me. So I'm gonna spend a second and talk about this card. After a lot of these mech cards that kind of just appeared, it's like red is a lot of mech cards kind of for limited, it seems like. And just in general, compared to some of the other cards that we've seen in the other colors. Um, three mana, two, two. You know, yes, it is a pirate, but three mana, two, two. Just shit. No other abilities. Imagine it is that. Now... Raid, as a mechanic, should give you some upside, should give you something cool, should give you some kind of reward, should make you happy, should, yeah, something cool. You play this card in your deck, in limited, or whatever, just a, looking at this card in general, and it's a 3 mana 2-2, two, two. and in Raid, it becomes a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. So It's like, what is the fucking point of making a card obviously shit, and then giving it a raid ability that makes it average. Why? Like, what does raid even do here? It's not cool. It's not used in any sweet way. It's not, like, actually furthering your gameplay strategy or, like, helping you out, really. There's no plus one, plus one counter interaction with pirates at all. It's like, there's not, like, a plus one or a counters matter theme with pirates, as far as I'm aware. So, why? It's a 3 mana 2-2 two two or a 3 mana 3-3. Three three. I'm out. Fucking shit. Um, this is sweet. In the mid-end. But, um... I don't know, this card's kind of trash. <laughs> It's just, uh, the enraged thing is so sweet for dinosaurs, but it's like, you need some cool way to repeatedly get that off, and it's like that. All these cards that have enraged can be kind of cool, and but there's not really anything here that is like, enraged. Like, at the beginning of your upkeep, deal one damage to blah blah blah, and like, and it's a one mana something, or like, I, I don't know, like, eh. Okay, card that, interestingly, talking about uh, Omnath, EDH, real quick, as an aside. 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Holy shit. And, if you have 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing. I'm wondering... Hold on, let me read this. So, a permanent is a card or token on the battlefield. Card or token becomes a permanent. Blah, blah, blah. Create X11 one, one red elemental creature tokens, aka permanents. And they stay if you have Ascend, which is very doable. And in my deck, it's just fucking Dreamland. Like, that is actually sweet. Um, I think this is going to go right in my deck. I think. Um, there's going to obviously have to be something I'm going to end up cutting. But fuck, this is really cool. Now, here's the negative. Here is the actual downside. Uh, it has to attack. So it's a 2 mana 1-1. One, one. And you don't get any, and let's just quickly value this for standard. Now, the Ascend, this is doable even in standard, if you think about it. But the turn that it comes into play, it doesn't do anything, is a 1-1. One, one. Can't block, really, and you have to then, you're pretty much forced into attacking with this guy. And spending a lot of fucking mana. But, the upside is that you get these guys that are tapped and attacking, which is kind of cool. But, standard, I don't think it's good enough. Okay? It's just not good enough. It's it's a it's a sweet card for probably Omnath, I think, because yeah, 
I'm mean, yeah. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> okay, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Card's cool. Green. Sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. Uh now four mana two five. I like this. Cool like effects. A lot of four mana are two four. It's cool that they added that one toughness. It's something different that is not the bar uh for four mana two four, so interesting. Um Cherist Hatchling. When it dies you may cast dinosaur spells this turn as though they had flash. And whenever you cast a dinosaur spell dinosaur spell this turn it gains when this creature enters the battlefield you may have it fight another target creature uh, the flash this turn like doesn't do much i don't think there's any cool abusive effect that like at instant speed is sweet i don't think um but it uh is kind of cool it's a two mana dinosaur, which is cool, which is unique, kind of, because there's a lot of three mana ones. And it fighting another target creature is an irrelevant enough ability that says you may, so you don't have to do it, but often your dudes are going to be bigger than their dudes. So this is, I think, pretty good. Uh, if, if dinosaurs is a thing. Um, but it's pretty cool. I, I like this card. Here's the dude that I'm probably going to cast the most in Limited if I ever play Limited in this set. Um, interesting art. I like it. You can see at first I thought it's like he's coming out of here. But then he's actually in the back. He's huge as fuck. This, if he's like coming out of the water, that would be interesting. But no. This is like cool. Like you just have your, your dudes in the water and it's like here's the big motherfucker. Um... Yeah, it's just cool to see art like that. Anyway, 5 mana 3-3, three, three, Trample. Oh my god, we got a Thragtus kind of effect, boys. When it enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with Trample. Cool fucking card. I like this guy. Potentially, definitely standard playable. Cool dude. Trample is kind of weird on this guy because he's not that huge, um, but, you know, whatever. All right, Deep Root Elite. Meaty, meaty, greedy, meaty, greedy guy. Itty, itty, yeah, uh, the nitty gritty. Oh, fucking my vocabulary, goddamn. Two mana, one, one. Whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target merfolk you control. Um, this works great with merfolk in general, works great with the unblockable guys, works great with uh, um, just getting a guy bigger so he can win a trade in combat or getting through for damage or putting it on himself. Uh, and the fact that it's abusive whenever another makes this look so much better than that white two mana one, one guy that I talked about earlier. Um, it makes the two mana one, one justified because it immediately can become a two, two and get out of hand for your other guys really quickly. And I really like this card. So, um, I don't think modern, I don't think it's good enough. Good? Yeah. I don't think. Maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't think. Although, in a collected company kind of deck, this is a Thalia's Lieutenant kind of card. Uh, yeah. I'm curious to see where this plays out. I like this guy. Near the Unknown. Is target creature you control explores, you may play an additional land this turn. So ramp, and but you have to have a target for a creature. So it's not just like one mana, turn one, play two lands, you know? It's not that, because you do have to have a target. So target creature you control explores, which is fine, and this is fine. It's an interesting card. Um... Don't know if it's going to have a home in standard, though. Here's the Forerunner for green. Merfolk. Four mana. Free two. Enters battlefield. Put a plus one plus counter on it. Not good enough. Next. Dude. Uh, this is reasonable in uh, limited, though, obviously. Okay. Uh, the face of the thing that you can get now with the other um, full art guy or whatever it is showdown preview thing uh yeah 
Galta, Primal Hunter, the Elder Guy for green. Costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control and trample. I wish they would have done this with all of the ones in the cycle, all the Elder Guys. Like, why did you not make another, like, cool token for the other guys or... Maybe they could be F in a row. I don't know. Just like cool stuff. To like it's like you give this guy the thing, but you don't, the, the sweet art and what and alternate art and yeah, but you don't give it to the green, uh, the blue guy or the red guy. Anyway, let's actually talk about this card. So, twelve mana, twelve twelve. Cost as X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. This can get out of hand. And I'm wondering if this will be the card that pushes dinosaurs over the top, but it is a legendary creature. So, like, just just think about this. Let's say you have a, let's say you have curved, and you play the two mana one three that makes your dinosaurs cost one less, and you play this guy. So you have seven power, and your dude costs one less. You have seven. Come on, internet. Okay. Seven um, and eight because it costs one less. So eight out of 12 means that this is a four mana 12 12 trample. I also, again, don't like this templating where trample and these other keywords are below these fucking text. I don't understand that because that doesn't always happen. And it's getting infuriating where I don't understand why sometimes the text is below and. I don't know why they've done that. Anyway, that's just a personal gripe about formatting and templating of cards. Anyway, I think this is pretty potent. <laughs> because it's a big fucking dude that has cost reduction. And potentially really sweet cost reduction. Like, the board state that I just mentioned is really doable. Because it's two creatures. Two cards that you have cast that are still on the battlefield. So if I'm only talking about two creatures, I mean, think about how many times Tamer Energy has Rogue Refiner and Whirler Virtuoso in play. Okay, imagine this being applied to that fucking deck. Or imagine being applied to any deck that plays green. Now, if you have the dinosaurs, that's another element. So, But the fact that it doesn't rely on dinosaurs means that this guy is fucking sweet. And is maybe modern... Playable, maybe. Also, just like cool, legendary dude, EDH playable, like fucking great job with this guy. I don't know how good he's gonna end up becoming for standard. It just may like whatever. He can see some play, and if the format doesn't shape up the right way, he could just become nothing, or he could be really fucking good. Um, art on this is interesting because there's an active like this is the way that this is captured is behind a mountain. Um, is because of the shadow here, and then this being highlighted is really cool. Like, I, cool way to to put that art. And he's he's on the move, right? Like his foot is in the air. So, cool, big big cool dude. Um, here is a Merfolk that I think is standard playable. I think, and, uh is popper sweet because it doesn't even rely on other merfolk and there's already a green stompy deck um, that plays uh skirt pit skit guy or whatever um i'm tired guys <laughs> uh anyway this guy is really cool that's about all i'm gonna say there really good card really like really good card that's the thing um this card is really sweet, actually, and it's kind of underrated um, that it's really sweet because it's a lot of times a guy that gets in for two for limited, gets in for two, gets in for two, makes it a two for a lot of time and means that they have to play their spells at instant speed and means that they can't do combat tricks very well. And it's just an incredible two drop for limited. Incredible. I feel like this is super, super first pick, especially if the curve of things is low. I don't see a world where it's not. Um, obviously, it doesn't play defense. Or sorry, it doesn't play... Um, yeah, it doesn't play defense very well. But great card. Hunt the week again. Cool art. 
really cool idea there. <laughs> Here's another one drop merfolk. Put a plus one plus one counter on another merfolk you control. And this is where this gets really interesting with this, gets really interesting with the other two drop. Um, it says whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter and gets really interested with the blue um, uh, can't be blocked guy and all this. So these guys work really well together and they're really cheap and they make themselves bigger and there's a cool effects later. So I like this deck coming together. I hope it becomes a thing. We'll get to that in a second. Um, really good. Uh, this is a really good limited card. We got three mana. 2-1 Merfolk, Scout, Jade Light Ranger. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it explores and explores again. Um, yeah. I think this is doable. Yeah, for sure. In uh, standard, for sure. In modern, probably not. It's double green. Um, but in standard, fuck yeah, dude. Another Merfolk. Love it. <laughs> Three minutes to two, enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk token with Hexproof. Actually, possibly a thing. We get two triggers with that other guy, plus most encounters, and as we'll see later, this plays in with the legendary dude really well. Um, and the other guy is hexproof, whatever. Um, yeah, this this is possibly standard playable, um, and in limited, it's great. We got a four mana two four two less to cast. So this is a four cost reduction for Galta, although it is four mana in itself. Interesting limited card. Uh, two, there's your two four and one up. naturalize. Also one of my favorite arts of the set. Did I talk about any gate earlier? I did, right? Well, please tell me I told I talked about the gate this time around. I have no idea if I did or not. Um, briefly, just real quick, I'm, I don't know if I talked about it. I'm going to have to look just to double check. Um, this art is fucking gorgeous. I think, no, I, I did talk about this, okay. Yeah, and how, like, I wish it was on a different card. Anyway, top, top art for the set. This. This, I think. This 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 <laughs> Sorry that I'm going on this rampage This This, maybe? Yeah, I like that art. This is fine. This is cool. And this. This art is sweet. It's just really cool. Really fucking cool. Good job, Simon. Um, uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing other art before. Sorry, I'm kind of spoiler spoilers. I like this art. It's like a time lapse kind of thing. I'll get into this in a second, I guess. Um, I'm just doing like full art kind of stuff right now. Making sure I'm not missing anything. I am doing a bad job of spoiling shit for you guys. Sorry, I'm a bad sorry. Holy shit, we have a lot of cards to go through. God fucking damn it, I'm slow. Um I like this art. I wish this was on a more prominent card. This art is fucking incredible. Noah Bradley. Holy shit. Why is this on? I mean, it matches the card called Highland Lake, right? Sure. But, like, oh, my God. Imagine this on Sulphur Falls or, like, any... Oh, my God. Noah Bradley. <laughs> You're a king, dude. You're a fucking king. Do you have any cool basic lands? I don't even know. These are sweet. 
Who is this guy? Dim Dimitar? I don't know who that is. But he did a good job. Okay, sorry about that. All the way back, all the way back to uh, three minute four two and whatever. Great for limited. <coughs> Possibly really cool EDH card. Holy shit, I'm losing my voice. Sorry, guys. I'm out of water. God damn it. Um, possibly a really cool EDH card. Plummet. Another kind of cool art. I don't like it as much as the other ones, though, but it's cool that they're bringing these cards back with different art. Polyraptor. Um, potential combo card with some things. Also, really cool art, too. Uh, it's just sweet. Um, yeah, that's about it. P possible combo card. Interesting card. Strength of the pack. Two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Um, maybe a card for my uh, tokens matters. Uh, Rayhan and uh, Silas Ren deck. Sure. Um, okay, here we go. Swift Warden. Three mana, three, three. Flash. Winner is the battlefield. Target Marvel you control gains hex proof until in turn. Love this card. Love this card. Love this card. So good. I think we'll see play. Uh, this card is really cool. Yeah, potential EDH card. Um, I don't know why they put this card in the set and why it's random for sapperlings and it's like this kind of effect is really cool in Magic. Like, um, like these token producing kind of effects are generally considered regarded well and in, and this kind of thing is cool and it's like I don't know why they would put this in uh, okay whatever um this guy is talking about like my thing with being on curve and different stats and a 3 4 for 3 which is great it's also a dinosaur that has a very relevant text so I like this card <laughs> also lol <laughs> thunder herd migration is a rampant growth Rampant growth with this reveal mechanic for revealing a dinosaur. I love this. And if you don't have a dinosaur, you can still do it for three mana. Thank you, wizards. Thank you. Uh, also, the art is really sweet. I like the time lapse kind of effect, the shadowing with the light from above and how it looks on the whole landscape. Um, Nice job. This is really cool. I keep saying cool and good a lot, but they are. They're nice. They're, they're nice, boys. We have a budget Azusa. Um, kind of. Um, I, people are talking about this better ways than I can. It is pretty much a buzzed Azusa. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to see play. I might see modern play. Who the fuck knows? And it is a 3 mana 5-5 five five that can happen, I guess, and has an interesting effect and is theoretically ramp as well, even in standard 2. And yeah, um, it's cool. I like this card. Not incredible, but uh, good that they've printed this card. World Shaper. 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Merfolk. When it attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. When it dies, put all lands card from your graveyard onto the battlefield tap. I was wondering about this in an Omnath deck. Uh, I really was. Um, in Standard, not really sure. Probably not. In Modern, not. EDH has a relevant enough effect where there's a lot of lands matter stuff in graveyard, but it's like, why would you play this four mana three three? The top three cards you library into your graveyard is like a dredge kind of thing. Like, there's different things going on that it doesn't do everything great, but it might see a home somewhere in some EDH deck maybe. Art is really cool, and the card name World Shaper is a big name kind of card like. Um, that's something that I thought would be delegated to something more 
more spicy. But uh, this is a cool card. Uh, not many people, I think, have talked about it, but um, I like this, and I love the fucking art. Raymond Swanland, dude, you're your god. Is that the same guy that did Nissa? I think recently, like the arts, like he does good green shit because he gets these green, these bluish co colors and tints, and then these yellows and like all this is just great. Okay, my dude. First planeswalker. We have Angrath, the flame chained. A red to black planeswalker, boys. A red to black planeswalker. With four loyalty, plus one. Each opponent discards a card and loses two life. Minus three. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. Sacrifice. There's got to be a better, better way to say that, by the way. Um, maybe that should just be a mechanic at some point. Keyword, sorry. Uh, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, like treachery or something like call it something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step if it has converted mana cost three or less. So, a lot of people don't like this guy. Oh, I need to read the ultimate. I'm gonna say each opponent loses life with the number of cards in his or her graveyard. Okay, so. A lot of people don't like this guy. I think he's sweet. <laughs> really sweet. Um, five mana plus one, good ability. It's a deal damage kind of thing, and it's uh, they're getting cocked. And in some matchups, it's really good. The minus ability is its quote unquote protection effect, which is interesting that it's on that instead of the plus. And it's also a really unique effect, like really unique on a Planeswalker and the fact that you can permanently keep the card. Wait, let me just make sure. Hold on. Uh, okay, I read that wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. This card is good. Mm, I'm not sure how to evaluate that effect. So you like on a smaller dude, it's removal that also lets you attack to get in damage. Um, but you don't get to keep it good like I thought you did. Um, I thought that was gonna be OP. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if he's gonna see much play. Um, Love the fact that they're making new guys. Love the fact that it is a black, red, and love the art. Love the, uh, hopefully, lore. We'll see. And love that he's a minotaur. And I think the ultimate is really cool, too. Effects are unique. Uh, I don't quite know where he's going to end up. Uh, design is, is nice. Design is, is cool. Trying new things. We have a random... <laughs> Green white. Why is this in here? Holy shit. Um, they added some of these, by the way. Like as we see here, we have this, and then down below you can see the Dead Eye Brawler guy and the Dire Fleet neck breaker. I don't know how they did this. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. I guess because it plays well with um draft with some of the with the previous set. Uh, sacrifice a return target dinosaur card from your graveyard to your hand. What if this said target card? Um, card is cool. Um, I'm really losing my voice. God damn it. Azor. Sphinx of Revelation Sphinx. This effect is really good. Because you're going to get something like this going. It's a big dude. It is double this shit, though. Uh, this is a, I think, a better card for reanimator kind of stuff. The problem with that is it doesn't work the same way that Grizzlebrand does. Well, it... Um, yeah, this doesn't... is not as good as Grizzlebrand. The end of the battlefield, meaning that you can still get this off and it ha be relevant next turn is also a reanimator possible like there's interesting things here a really cool card i like this guy a lot um again i don't have time to explore everything uh, we've been going for two hours now 
uh, we're on the home stretch, boys. But we uh, we like these kinds of cards, and I think this is going to be good. And I think this is going to be cheated into play in some ways, maybe sort of, probably. Uh, if I don't know about staying around and doing this and thing in like legacy or something, um, modern is uh, probably not. But uh, cool card. A really cool EDH guy too. Yeah, really cool EDH guy. Four mana death touch. Yeah. Four mana really good limited card. Yeah. I don't think. Th yeah, this could maybe see the top end of a standard pirate deck. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Could be there. Could be good. We have this dude, which has been talking about. Alenda. Another mythic vampire for four mana. But it's a 1-1. One, one. Lifelink. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When she dies, create X-1-1 one, one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink where X is her power. This is maybe the glue that holds together. So, okay, so we'll talk about EDH in a second. This is maybe the glue that can hold together a standard vampire deck. It's kind of awkward because it's a 4-mana 1-1, one, one, but it has lifelink. You're likely going to get something out of this in some way. And I think this is a very deceptive card. If I hearken back to like a Falcon Wrath Aristocrat kind of thing or that kind of power level, I think this could be on that similar vein. I think it can see play. I think it can be good. Um, it's whenever another creature, not another creature you control, so it can become big and out of hand really quickly with the lifelink. Um, on top of that, it dying, uh, getting all those tokens that also have lifelink. So, I like this card, please. Now an EDH, uh, really cool card. That's what I'm going to talk about there. Really cool card. I want to get to Watley. Watley. What? Radiant Champion. Four mana, green, white. Uh, and all of the this shit is red. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Three loyalty, plus one. Put a loyalty counter on Huatli for each creature you control. Minus one. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. Minus eight. You get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Plus one. Incredibly deceptive. Now, okay, let's just start. I don't know about green, white, and standard, or how this is going to work, or anything like that. If it will come up later, or you, I mean, you have some Petal Grove, like maybe the next set, and what is it, Dominaria, or I don't know if there's a 25th set, or whatever the fuck. If it gets better mana for green, white, this. A lot of people, first of all, a lot of people don't think this card's very good. This effect is very good. Right here. And it's deceptive in how good it is. But this is potentially a 4 mana become 6 or 7 loyalty on the first turn. Late game, this is potentially play this guy, next turn ultimate. Um, or play this guy and get really good effect out of this minus 1 ability. Late game. This minus one ability is not that great early game, uh, but late game it just progressively gets better, and this I like, and it's only minus one. Minus eight uh, is obviously good. It doesn't necessarily close the game, but you get so much advantage that I think it's a pretty good effect. I like Watley. Uh, and... I think we'll see applications in many places. I think this is very deceptive, and I think people who don't think this card's very good are um, not evaluating it properly. The problem with this card, which I will admit, is its mana, 
and is if something will be able to utilize this fully. I don't know about modern. Planeswalkers are starting to become more common in modern. And like if you just think about a traditional Abzan deck, this is possibly really good with Lingering Souls uh, kind of thing. Uh, and it could be reasonable there. Um, in like an Abzan kind of shell. Um, this is... I want this card to be good. And I think it is on its own reasonable. The question is, you know, can these color requirements make it all right? And will that be supported? And Yeah. I like it though. Jungle Creeper. Okay. Yeah. It's a very expensive way to get recursion and late game engine back, but... And it's a thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why this card is here. 3 mana 3-3, three, three, uncommon. It's got to be an uncommon, boys, to get that 3-3 that three, three for your 3 mana. And your double, co your off color, yeah, and, I don't know. The card I wanted to talk about for the longest time. Kumena, which I guess, now that I think about it, the blue art up there is probably Kumena. It's cool that we got a legendary before into Shauna. We now we got a, another legendary here. Like I like that instead of just doing the same creature in different ways, like with Samud and now Hawatli and like all this other shit. Gumena, Tyrant of Araska. Three mana, two four. Fits in the Collected Company. Keep that in mind. Legendary Merfolk. Tap another untap Merfolk you control. It can't be blocked this turn. Tap 3, untap Merfolk you control, draw a card. Tap 5, untap Merfolk you control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each Merfolk you control. I love this card. I love this card. I fucking love this card. Um, question is, how much do I want to talk about? Because I'm running out of time, and it's like it's very clear that this card is good. I don't know. Like It's going to be a 3 or a 4 of. I feel like it's got to be a 4 of. The problem is it is legendary. Uh, but you know your opponent kills it and he's like I'll just play another one or you get value out of it immediately before they kill it and it's just so good like this ability is so great and mm, I love this I love this so much uh, and I didn't previously attach myself too much to Merfolk before um, but this might bring me back to standard if this can become a thing because I like this kind of card and in modern um, if it can work with collected company uh, I might give it a try, maybe. This effect is possibly okay, because in modern, uh, it becomes a five power dude really quickly, and getting in for that is great. Uh, this is obviously absurd. This is also very good, and also very doable, because you can see a, a scenario where this comes into play with company and you just immediately get the effect. Um, I love this card. Yep. Okay, here are some things. Legion's Lieutenant. A Lord. Uncommon. What the fuck? Fuck yeah, boys. This is so cool that they're doing this. Um, when I saw this and the Merfolk here in a second about to get spoiled, I just got super excited. This is incredible. We'll look at these together. Holy shit. Like this, this, and all the one drops that we talked about earlier, and Silvergill Adept, and the whenever they deal damage, draw a card, and the counters guy. Like, think about all these cards. Here. I can, this is such a good strategy right now. And the Kamena Speaker from the previous set, a Merfolk Branchwalker. Like, this is actually very good and very doable, and you have so many options in standard. I love this, right? I, I love this, that... Just good job, Wizards. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. What if they did this for elves, by the way? Holy shit. Like, in standard or like some, something like that. <laughs> anyway, um, this guy... Also very crucial to vampires. I think vampires are definitely a level below because their 
mythic guys didn't get somebody of this level. Now, they did get the black dude uh, chick who's flying and I don't think is very good. They did get the black-white legendary chick who I think is probably pretty good. Um, and with this, making her power larger, it's also even better. Uh, but I don't know if the tribe is quite good enough yet compared to, comparatively to Merfolk, but I would love to see a format that has both of these tribes at the forefront. Like, you create two sets devoted to this, and you want to see something. Come on, guys. Like, you want to see something out of this, or dinosaurs or something. Like, you know what I mean? Don't you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to just take the good creatures out of this or the good things out of this that aren't related to tribes and have an entire block of standard and not get to play tr cool, tr fun tribes. Like, and I want to embrace that and, and truly see a standard format where that's a thing because that's a cool thing to have, you know? I hope it happens. Um, this guy. Protean Raider. Three mana. Not a human, by the way. Pirate 2-2. Two, two. If you attack with a creature this turn, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Cool, cool, cool card. I, I, I think pirates are well off here, and they did not get a lord, neither did dinosaurs. I don't know why that didn't happen. really don't know why. But, um... Like, would pirates be too good if they got a lord? Maybe they would be. Maybe not. I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. Um, this card is cool. Raging Dinosaur. 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Tax deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Um, yeah, okay. This card is cool, good for limited. Can trigger and rage and is uh, removal or damage or whatever, but it is uh, it's gotta need like uh, something else going on to make it playable for standard, I think. So, this is what the dinosaurs got in terms of like a two drop whatever card, like good quality card. Uh, three three vigilance attacks or blocks each combat with, uh, if able. Um, this card's great. Uh, the problem with it is that you both have to attack and then block on the turn after, but like you're already fine with that, I think. You're gonna get a good trade with this guy, you're probably gonna get in for damage. Um, I think this card's sweet. Good job. Wish I could spend more time talking about these cards, or you know what I mean. Um, sure. Another two drop for dinosaurs, uh, but I don't like it. Whenever it's dealt damage, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Seems like it's gonna be fine. Uh, but it's only a two two, and so the. Uh, poor aspect of it is that if you don't have something that enables enrage immediately then it has to survive combat to even do anything otherwise it's just two mana two two now here's the pluses of it if you do have something that involves enrage this is a two mana four four now obviously for that specific turn it will have one damage on it but for better or worse it's a two mana four four if you can just get something to trigger enrage and once the first enrage trigger goes off and it survives, then you can continue doing it and it continues getting fucking crazy, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, it can get out of hand really quickly, but uh, it, if it's you don't have that, then it has to survive the combat. Now, because it can get out of hand quickly, it's wondering. I'm wondering if your opponent targets this early on um, because of they want to kill it while they have the opportunity to, and it's so it could pave the way for other things, potentially. I'm trying to think of, like, you know, if you can have the mana to be able to do, like, or you think about, like, Ripjaw Raptor, and you think of these other medium cards, uh, not medium in their quality, but, like, medium, like, uh, casting costs, like, four mana, like, that's a mid rangey kind of thing, and I think there exists a world where Inaya Dinosaur deck could happen. Again, Teamer Energy. Imagine if that goes away, guys. Just fucking imagine it. If it doesn't go away, we're not seeing the end of it. But the format would just be completely open. I would love to see that happen. Holy shit. A really cool pirate. Uh, maybe this is why there wasn't a two-drop pirate lord. Um, 
because then you'd have a three mana three three haste unblockable. I like this guy. Would talk more about him, but uh, yeah, really obviously really cool effect. Hopefully he sees play in some regards. This is also interesting in uh, you know how we have the can't think of the storm chaser mage like in legacy and modern and stuff like that can be more of a thing here uh, the can't be blocked means that a lot of clauses already change on your requirement for this deck to exist you know how it's like the kiln fiend and the, the storm chaser mage and like these tempo weird kind of like emma handy has played this in legacy and stuff like that and in modern three mana two two creature with haste is not unreasonable and can't be blocked so you auto get in for that damage just think about that most of the time if it resolves obviously lots of things can kill it but it's not doing anything in combat that is creature oriented so you just need a few pump spells and you have something here possibly maybe obviously it doesn't have prowess but Zakama, Primal Calamity. Got several heads going on. Got some Naya shit going on. Uh, nine mana, nine nine. Vigilance, Reach, Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. Two in a red, deals three damage to target creature. Two in a green, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Two in a white, you gain three life. So... There's obviously cost reduction stuff out there. There's ramp out there to make this cheaper and standard. This is a dream thing, I guess, yeah. I mean, like, you're winning the game if this comes into play and stuff. Like, <laughs> pretty much, I think. Um, the problem is there's nothing that really says, like, the abilities of your dinosaurs also cost less. Like, once you untap your lands, you may only have six or seven lands. And then these things you can only activate so many times. Um, it would be really cool, I think, if these were one in a red, one in a green, one in a white. It would just be really cool, I think. Um, EDH, dude, obviously. Just obvious. Untap all lands you control. Just great with EDH. Uh, this cannot be used in Reanimator. And it would be cool if it could have been. Uh, I think because it just gives other options and changes things up slightly, which is always great. Um, and the effects are cool, big dude, and splashy. Double face, love these. Um, I guess we'll just look at them like this. Beginning at three mana, at the beginning of combat of your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if that creature has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, transform it. So I don't know about standard because you'd have to stack these on multiple guys. But this is actually a sideboard option for Merfolk. But outside of that, this is obviously like a counters matter kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of EDH decks that this revolves around for sure. But um, in terms of standard, this is a maybe a sideboard for like control stuff where you just get this incremental stuff and then if this happens, then you get add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or three, target creature you control gains flying and gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is power, great ability. So this is definitely a thing with Merfolk. Like this could happen, and if that does trigger and this becomes a thing, you're doing pretty good. So yeah, it is three mana, which doesn't give you any relevant stuff besides a counter at the offset but if it already has counters implemented from before which with that two drop guys possibility um this is really great it is legendary maybe this is like a one or a two of main or sideboard or i'm not really quite sure but it definitely has a place and it also has a place for sure elsewhere in other formats um yeah journey to eternity another three drop uh creature you control when that creature dies, return it to the battlefield under your control, and then return this to your battlefield transformed. So you get a free recursive thing, and but obviously if they kill this first, then it doesn't get it, any of its effect. Like, it has to have when enchanted creature dies. So they just kill this, then you don't get any kind of thing. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, add one mana of any mana pool. Right? Color any mana. Yeah. Uh, five. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now it does say from your graveyard, but um, love this card. Path of Metal, don't love this one as much. Enters the battlefield, deals one damage to each creature that does not have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. When you attack with at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, vigilance, and or haste, transform it. Allen mana of any color to your mana pool, deals damage, deals two damage to each opponent. Uh, choose a creature at random and that attack this card to destroy this creature. I like these here. These two effects are really cool. Like, um, cool that they did that for white and red. But I think the first side of this thing is like wonky, kind of like, you yeah, don't know. This is definitely doable. You have to build around. It takes a lot to require, whereas these are a little bit simpler. Um, to get off uh, these, I think, at their the path of metal, I think, takes a little bit more and kind of wonky. I do like these effects though. We have profane procession five exile target creature. Then, if there are three more cards exiled with it, uh, transform it. Excuse me, uh, add one mana, the other mana color to your mana pool. Put a creature card exiled with this permanent onto the battlefield under your control. I'm going to take a quick break. Be right back. Sorry. Really quick break. And then when I come back, we will talk about this card a little bit.
Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so this card is Exile Target Creature, uh, which is a great static effect. I mean, you play this on three, it does nothing. Kind of sucks, but it can get going really quick. Um, and it's a really intrinsically powerful effect that does something on its own. It's also kind of the card that's like in your control deck if you have the time and you forego the fact that on turn three you're doing nothing with it. Turn four, whatever happens. You play a creature, you play a removal spell, you draw guards, you do something. Obviously, we're in a world here where two turns, or well, realistically only one turn, um, something, uh, you didn't do anything. You wasted, you time-locked yourself. But, <coughs> turn five comes around and you haven't lost the game. You can activate this at will instant speed. Creature's gone. Not even destroyed, just gone. It's dead forever. You do this every turn, and basically your opponent has to play two spells a turn, two creatures a turn, to not get one of, to not waste their turn. Um, and when you have three of these, then it transforms, just auto. Although you did pay the mana, but then. This is just really good. So, in EDH, this card is fucking absurd. <coughs> Stupidly absurd, sorry. And I think there exists a world in some kind of deck where this can be really good in standard. Yes, you're giving up a turn. Yes, it's kind of awkward. But it's one of the most powerful late game things that I have ever seen. And not even late game, but just like mid mid game, like... You just dominate the board state and force your opponent to have to play, like, you just every turn, gone, gone, gone. And then now you just take over the game. Um, really awesome shit right here. Tomb of the Dusk Rose. Love that. Nice. Storm the Vault. Four mana. Okay. Whenever one or more of your creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, create a colorless treasure artifact token with sacrifice, blah, blah, blah. Beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, so just in general, transform it. Uh, Tolarian Academy. Uh, I did not know, I don't know why this is four mana. Doesn't seem like it needs to be. Um, maybe because cause this says whenever one or more which is really important, so you have to, like, you can't just get, like, here's three artifacts immediately, and now I just had two, so I, it transforms immediately, and you get that effect. I mean, it does, it is a very powerful effect, don't get me wrong, but when you're looking at something like this, yeah, um, interesting. Uh, obviously, really strong effect, standard, I don't know, I don't think it's very good. Um... Yeah, cool card. Alright, we have Zor's Gateway, Mythic. Two mana. One, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with a Zor's Gateway, you gain five life, untap it, and transform it. Pya. So, this is really difficult to do. Like, there's not a super significant downside, but it's going to take a while. But, EDH, man, you do that, then it's like... Yeah, okay, there you go. Um, four mana defender, two, fights another target creature you control. When it dies this turn, return it to the battlefield transformed into... Add two mana color to your, of any one color to your mana pool. Also, really cool art. Create a 4 4 colorless golem artifact creature token. Unique card. Very, very, very unique card. I don't think it's going to see play in standard. I don't think. Maybe. There's a chance. Don't know how to evaluate this guy. 
Really cool card, though. That's a cool meme, Garb. Uh, we have four mana. Power and toughness equal to the number of differently named lands you control. Sure, magic. Let's let's just do this kind of thing too. Just this is just a purely fun card, boys. Very um, yeah, purely fun card. Nothing wrong with it. Purely fun card. Captain's hook. Equip creature gets plus two plus zero. Oh, has menace and is a pirate in addition to its other creature types. When it becomes unattached from a permanent, destroy that permanent. It's only one to equip. Like, why does this have to cost three? I don't think it's that great at two. Maybe it is. I'd like to see this card cost two mana. Um, okay. Two mana, oh, four dies. Whatever. Immortal Sun. Wait, wasn't this? Sanctum of the Sun. Okay, and we have Blood Sun. So we have some Sun shit going on. Didn't we just have that with Amakai? I don't know. Players can't activate six mana. Players can't activate Planeswalker's loyalty abilities. Why can't that just say your opponents or something? I guess this just makes more sense. Yeah, this may, never mind. This makes more sense. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Spells you cast cost one less to cast. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. EDH, whatever, yeah, great, good shit. Uh, this spell reduction is pretty cool. I think it's the best one. Obviously, at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card, uh, card is great. I think both of these are both very good, and this last one is kind of just cherry icing. Uh, probably will see play in different EDH decks for sure. Uh, three mana... Add colors to your mana pool, sacrifice it, you gain three life and draw a card. Activate this ability only if you have the city's blessing. Yeah. One mana. Cards in graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Exile it for four mana and tap. And all cards from all graveyards. Draw a card. So a different way to think about uh cool art by the way different way to think about graveyard of hate and relic of progenitus affect stuff it's interesting that they made this card uh it's one mana and a relevant ability to start with and then you know it's not relic of progenitus but you can still have that option if you want i think this will see some amount of modern play so good to have cards like this three mana equip creature gets plus 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 one plus one and haste equip one cool um you know traveler's amulet uh sacrifice it search your library for blah 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 traveler's amulet but it's a interesting card harkening back to the same art um kind of ish yeah cool art i like the colors we got these uncommon lands god fucking damn dude a lot of these are some of my more favorite artists lately too for lands like jonas de Rowe has a lot of cards that i like you know bradley obviously uh young house young how han uh has he did some from kaladesh that i really 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 like Nor Bradley did this one, also is kind of cool. And then we have James Pake, who's another one of my favorite lands artists. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know if he's just joining into the foray and they started him off with uh, basics, but pretty cool. Kind of cool stuff going on here. Um, kind of seems like some BFC stuff right here. So, we have that done in 2 hours and 38 minutes. Sorry for the couple breaks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my Rivals of Ixalan set review. We went through basically every card. That took longer than I thought it would. And uh, it gives me some appreciation for people who do this all the time. And the amount of time that it takes. And the preparation that it takes. Because I didn't do any of that shit. And it's like uh, looking at it earlier. Um, I think, okay, we're going to 
this is going to be where the uh, full review ends. I'm going to give my thoughts in a succinct format for just a general thought process on this set here in a moment. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching the full set review. Stay tuned to my short highlight clip, so to speak, of my thoughts on Rivals of Ixalan. But uh, I enjoyed this, something different. Um, I hope the audio and all that other stuff were fine. I know I repeated myself with crap that vocabulary. Uh, I hope I, I mean, little quirks and whatnot helped out. Uh, I don't know if the entertainment value was really that great. I hope somebody got something out of it. I didn't go super in depth, and that's the problem with these, I guess. And then if I had more time allotted, then I would like to go further in depth with some of these. Uh, there's content creators out there that do probably a better job than I do, but I wanted to dabble in it anyway and um, try this out. And uh, I'm losing my voice here, I enjoyed it, and I hope somebody somewhere got something out of this. So that's what counts, I guess, and I enjoyed doing it. So thanks for watching, and I will give a short um, review process of the general thoughts of the set. Rivals of Ixalan, boys. Comes out pretty soon. We got CM Games pre-release coming up. Um, $20 entry. Holy fuck. I did not know that that was happening. And uh, I may have to drop by on Sunday, maybe? Yeah. Hope you guys enjoy it. I hope this set turns out great. And I'll see you soon. Peace out.